heartbreaking. Star QB found dead. Huge loss. Not many details have been released. But we have now gotten confirmation the sports world has lost an up-and-coming superstar this morning. Tyler Helinski, who was the new 21-year-old freshman superstar quarterback for the Michigan State football team was found unresponsive in his apartment after police conducted a welfare check at his home following his failure to show up for practice on Monday and Tuesday of this week. A statement from the Pullman Police Department confirmed they entered Helinski's residence and discovered the starting quarterback dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Next to him was the rifle he used. Washington State head coach Mike Leach released a statement saying we are deeply saddened to learn of the news of Tyler's passing. He was an incredible young man and everyone who had the privilege of knowing him was better for it. The entire WSU community mourns as thoughts and prayers go out to his family. Fox News reported. Helinski, a redshirt sophomore, was set to take over the starting quarterback job next season for the departing Luke Falk. Helinski started the team's Holiday Bowl loss to Michigan State because Falk was unable to play due to a wrist injury. Helinski appeared in eight games during his sophomore season throwing for 1,176 yards and seven touchdowns. His most memorable game came in the second week of the season when he led Washington State from a 21-point deficit in the fourth quarter to beat Boise State 47-44 in triple overtime. Hildinski threw for 240 yards and three touchdowns coming off the bench. What an utter waste of a promising life which could have gone on to affect many in a positive way, I guess now we will never know. All we can do now is pray for him, his family and his friends in this moment of tragic loss. Via WebMD Recognize the warning signs of suicide Suicide warning, depression carries a high risk of suicide. Anybody who expresses suicidal thoughts or intentions should be taken very seriously. Do not hesitate to call your local suicide hotline immediately. Call 800-SUICIDE, 800-784. 2433, or 800-273-TALK, 800-273-8255, or the Deaf Hotline at 800-799-4889. The best way to minimize the risk of suicide is to know the risk factors and to recognize the warning signs of suicide. Take these signs seriously. Know how to respond to them. It could save someone's life. How prevalent is suicide? Suicide is a potentially preventable public health problem. In 2014, the last year for which statistics are available, suicide was the 10th leading cause of death in the U.S. That year, there were nearly 43,000 suicides, and 1.3 million adults attempted suicide, according to the CDC. Suicide is the second leading cause of death in people from age 10 to age 34. Men take their lives nearly four times the rate of women, accounting for 78% of suicides in the U.S. Are there risk factors for suicide? Risk factors for suicide vary by age, gender, and ethnic group. And risk factors often occur in combinations. Over 90% of people who die by suicide have clinical depression or another diagnosable mental disorder. Many times. People who die by suicide have an alcohol or substance abuse problem. Often they have that problem in combination with other mental disorders. Adverse or traumatic life events in combination with other risk factors, such as clinical depression, may lead to suicide. But suicide and suicidal behavior are never normal responses to stress. Other risk factors for suicide include One or more prior suicide attempts Family history of mental disorder or substance abuse. Family history of suicide. Family violence. Physical or sexual abuse. Keeping firearms in the home. Chronic physical illness, including chronic pain. Incarceration. Exposure to the suicidal behavior of others. Are there warning signs of suicide? Warning signs that someone may be thinking about or planning to commit suicide include always talking or thinking about death, clinical depression, deep sadness, loss of interest, trouble sleeping and eating, that gets worse, having a death wish, tempting fate by taking risks that could lead to death, 
such as driving fast or running red lights. Losing interest in things one used to care about. Making comments about being hopeless, helpless, or worthless. Putting affairs in order, tying up loose ends, changing a will. Saying things like it would be better if I wasn't here or I want out. Sudden, unexpected switch from being very sad to being very calm or appearing to be happy. Talking about suicide or killing one's self. Visiting or calling people to say goodbye. Be especially concerned if a person is exhibiting any of these warning signs and has attempted suicide in the past. According to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, between 20% and 50% of people who commit suicide have had a previous attempt. What should I do if someone I know shows warning signs of suicide? First, if someone you know appears to be depressed and is contemplating suicide, take that person seriously. Listen to what he or she is saying. Take the initiative to ask that person what he or she is planning. But don't attempt to argue him or her out of committing suicide. Rather, let the person know that you care and understand and are listening. Avoid statements like, you have so much to live for. And ask if the person has sought help from a medical or mental professional, or if he is currently being treated by a mental health professional. If someone you know appears to be depressed and talks about suicide, makes a suicidal gesture, or attempts suicide, take it as a serious emergency. Listen to the person, but don't try to argue with him or her. Seek immediate help from a healthcare professional. People who experience a major depressive episode are often suicidal. It is a key symptom of the disease. Some studies show that the neurotransmitter serotonin plays a central role in the neurobiology of suicide. Researchers have found lower levels of serotonin in the brainstem and cerebrospinal fluid of suicidal individuals. In addition, suicidal behavior sometimes runs in families. Remember, any talk of suicide is always an emergency. Have the person talk with a healthcare professional immediately. Where can I get help for suicide and depression? Encourage a suicidal or depressed person to seek the help of a mental health professional. Because the person may feel so hopeless that they may not think it's possible to be helped, you'll probably have to be persistent and go with that person. If your loved one appears to be in imminent danger of committing suicide, do not leave him or her alone. Remove any weapons or drugs he or she could use. Accompany him or her to the nearest emergency room or call 911. During treatment, be supportive. Help the person remember to take antidepressants or other prescribed medications and to continue any other therapy that's been prescribed. Why do people who seem to have it all do this to themselves? Where are the friends and family in all this equation? Tyler Helinski had his whole life ahead of him. And a promising life too. Yet he decided to take the easy way out. Now we will never know what he could have been. Maybe the next Joe Montana or Tom Brady. Or maybe he would have been a doctor and saved many lives instead. Now we will never know. Please share if you agree we need more suicide awareness. Suicide is not a joke, it's permanent, and sometimes you have absolutely no warning when someone attempts to take their own lives. Please, take every threat, mention, or joke about doing so serious. And if you or anyone you know is struggling with personal issues that may lead to suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-TALK, 8255-D5.